In this video, trigger fireworks from a command, channel point, or other events. Events that also scale, so if you get a large raid, you'll put on quite the show. Hello, and welcome to Streamer Bot Bites, where I cover how to set up and to make the most of the awesome streamer bot. There is one video per topic to make it easy as possible to follow and find. When relevant, Sample import code will be provided to make it even easier for you to get started and to add functionality to your stream. So let's get started with the topic for this video. To set up an OPS, we just need to add a browser source. So if you have nested scenes, I suggest you put it into there so it's on every scene. If not, you can you reuse the same browser source in the scenes that you want to have the fireworks. So, you need to create a new browser source. I'm going to call it Fireworks. The name doesn't make a difference whatsoever. We then need to get the URL from the import code. And this is um, not. We then need to get the URL from the description below. Paste that in there. So that's vrflad.com slash fireworks slash fireworks v2.html. The width and height need to be that It'll set into the OBS. So 1920 by 1080 by default. And we can see there, this is all got that set up. Now there is sound on this. So depending on how you have your sound to set up in OBS, you'll probably want to control the audio via OBS. You can then, under advanced audio properties, change the audio monitoring. So for myself, I use um, everything on monitor only mute output and now I can control the volume of the fireworks here. To set up StreamerBot for fireworks open up the import code from the link in the description below select the whole text copy and then StreamerBot paste it into the import string. We'll see here that it imports 13 actions including a queue called fireworks, a command called fireworks. So if you don't want to be triggering a single firework by that, you can untick that. And that's all ready to go. So the queue here, fireworks blocking, is one that's really needed here to work properly. So import the code. Now this is going to, by default, import the command. We'll see here there's no permissions, so everyone is allowed but you might want to limit it to moderators and VIPs, for example, if you want to do that. Change that away. You may want to have a way to toggle it to be enabled and disabled on the command on a particular event that may be happening in your stream. So this is the simplest of the actions that we set up for fireworks. What we do need for fireworks to function is the WebSocket server to be enabled. If it's not enabled already, it'll look something like this. You just select the auto start, click on start server, and that's all you need to do. So within the actions, you have all the events here. You have a general 10 fireworks. So you could tie the fireworks command, for example, instead of to fireworks to a general 10 fireworks, when 10 fireworks be set off. What most people will probably want to use this for is to tie it to events. So things like subs, resubs, gift subs, gift bombs, hosts, raids. And we have all the, the details in here to be able to cover that for you. If you have, um, if you want to set up cheers, for example, let's start with that. You can just pick the cheers action here. Now, if you already had a cheer action, you can go to here, see if it's got an action there already, find the action, and then you can do something like go to the fireworks events cheers in there. So you can add this to your actions that you already have in place for events, rather than having to replace them. Now, there are ones for cheers, gift bomb, gift sub, raid, resub, and sub, because when those events occur, certain arguments are set in the bot. And you can see in here, 
that you'll have in the top of them, you have set argument bits per firework to 50. This means 50 bits per firework. So 0 to 50 is one firework, 50 to, uh, 51 to 100 will be two, etc. So you can control the fireworks that you're going to get. It does scale very well. Um, on most machines, you'll get a good experience of the fireworks, but obviously test it, see how it feels with the kind of bit ranges that you get uh, donated in your channel. Gift bombs, much the same. So what you'll find is it will multiply the gifts by the gift bomb multiplier, which is set at the top here, currently five, by the tier. Now if it's prime or tier one, it multiplies it by one. Tier two multiplies by two. Tier three is multiplied by three. Gift sub, very, very similar. Monthly multiplier again, multiplied by the tier. Raid, raid multiplier is going to multiply the number of viewers that are raided by the raid multiplier. Again, you might want this to be a smaller number if you get big raids. You can always use a fraction of a number, say 0 0.1. So 10, uh, 10 raiders will be one firework. But it depends on your channel. This is why you have these options to customize it. Resubs, again, you have a monthly multiplier, looks at a tier, looks at um, the accumulative months. So if someone's resub for 10 months, it's going to multiply by 10. So for those that are resupported your channel, they're going to get quite a show. For those that are subscribing for the first time, they'll have a monthly multiplier by one, but obviously no cumulative months, so it's going to be very similar. The events here are just to fix changing the tier names um, from actual names to a number to use in the math. We also have a, a general action as well. This is so you can do things like hosts. So a host may give 10 fireworks, um, which is what I use, but I've left it there as a generic option. If you wanted to say do 20 fireworks as an option, you can just right click duplicate, change it to 20 fireworks in the name, change the argument here to be 20. And as simple as that, you've got an action that triggers 20 fireworks and you can use it from anywhere. Voice action, HTML deck, whatever you want. So that's how to get it all set up in Streamerbot. And now we're ready to test. Within Twitch events and the relevant events, we can put things like different bits values to test. So you can see 100 bits here is doing two sets of fireworks. Sometimes a firework redeemed does actually more than one firework because it's they're tied together in, in the web page. But you can see here if we do a thousand bits, it's going to do 10 times. A lot of different fireworks there. A much better show and you'll see it scale up more and more and more quite quite easily this is a relatively low powered laptop it is using an intel graphics card in it or from the processor itself and you can see it's handling it quite well and something like 5000 bits by default is going to do quite the show and to really show your appreciation of the support in your channel so you can test other events in the same way we won't do that now, but in subs, for example, you can set the tier. Resubs, the cumulative will make a difference here. Gift subs, gift bombs, hosts, and so forth. And now for the optional part, the explanation of the actions that are used here. The web page, as you thought before, will connect using web sockets. What that does, it tracks for the action being triggered of fireworks and we can see here there's actually nothing that happens in, fire, in fireworks action apart from a short delay so the web sockets going to be triggered um, by that action and so whenever you trigger this be it through a single command or by other events we're going to do one firework The multi-redeem is the main one, and this will look at an argument called cumulative. If that's greater than zero, it's going to do the fireworks, continue. Then, if not, it's going to set an argument 
cumulative to a math, so it's going to use math, math calculation, cumulative minus one. So it takes off one. So it then does uh, fireworks again, delays, and calls itself. Now, calling itself is usually a very bad idea in StreamerBot, and it does do a warning when you create this. But in this circumstance, it's okay. You just need to make sure you're calling where you have a cumulative number set. And you'll see when we action this multi-redeem, the number is set beforehand. The way it also does, it reduces that number each time until it gets to a point where it's equal to or less than zero. Events like cheers work this number out based on um, bits per firework. And what we'll do then is the bits, if it's greater than zero, again, we're gonna try and loop around. We call the events cheers much in the same way. But we set the argument bits, which is what we start off with, to the math of bits minus bits per firework. So it means if we have 50 bits, we're going to get the initial number, take 50 off it. So if you have 100, we're going to run it through, uh, basically from there. And so we'll see that the bits per firework is going to vary to how many fireworks you get for the bits that have been uh, um, processed in the stream. Again, running the action fireworks will trigger the fireworks of the delay and calling itself. Gift bomb, gift sub, raid, resub, they all do very similar things. They have an argument to multiply. They set that cumulative value to zero, just to be safe. Do the math there, and we call it the multi-redeem with that large number set. And they all work in a very, very similar way. What you'll see in resub and sub, you'll look for tier. If it equals prime, tier one, tier two, or tier three, it's gonna trigger these events of the fixes. That's basically going to change the tier one to one, or prime to one, tier two to number two. This is, so then you can use that in the math multiplier later on. So it's looking at the actual name which can't be used because it's tier one prime tier two tier three and it's changing it to a number so then it can do the, the mass with that number then calling the fireworks multi-redeem to actually trigger the fireworks itself and that then concludes it for today please like and subscribe to be notified of more videos like this if there's a topic you like covered please do let me know in the comments or on discord Check out my Twitch stream to see the bot in action and for other examples. The links to my Twitch, social media and to StreamerBot can be found at vrflad.com. Additional links to others that provide StreamerBot content can be also found in the description. Finally, thank you Nate for making a great bot and please consider supporting his Patreon which is linked from streamer.bot.